Um, our last guest there uh, caught me a little off guard. I, I, I figured a university in Jersey City, he might be, you know, a little more um, to the moderate side, but, you know, hitting me over the head with the popular vote. That was kind of weird. That, that's a, this an ongoing debate, you know, that many people can argue intelligently uh, for, for both sides. I, I'm not there yet. I'm not in that camp. Uh, I think the greater issue right now that's resonating is just the belief that the voting process itself is fair and open. You know, we've seen two presidential elections in a row where both sides, perhaps all sides, just don't believe it. And, you know, one of, I, there's a lot of reasons why it's happening. Perhaps it's the instant, you know, I want to see things instantaneously, you know, in Clark County in Nevada or Maricopa County in Arizona. And because I'm on social media and Facebook and Instagram, I deserve to know right now. And then you have an apparatus, a media apparatus that wants to beat everybody to the punch. Uh, so they're out there just spinning stuff and, and giving commentary on things that are just sometimes meaningless. Uh, so you have all these just factors, but at the bottom of the bottom of the at the end of the game, it's do I trust what just happened? So the electoral college and popular vote to me are different things. I think it has the potential to really breach this country if you abolish the electoral college. People in small states, you know, would not like it. Uh, but, you know, in real time, we have issues that could determine who the next president of the United States are in states that we're not present in, but clearly something's going on right now. And uh, whether it's Michigan, Pennsylvania, or Wisconsin, Nevada, Arizona, uh, I th because we're vested in, we also feel sort of helpless, like what's happening? And we want to believe in it, but the reality is not everybody does. So, yeah, I mean, look, the media, you know, to some extent has us almost so manipulated that we have to fight the social dialogue with people on the other side of this presidential race that Trump should be, he should be submitting easily. It should be a, a peaceful transition. The freaking thing's not over yet. And all the polling was way off. So at the same time, like they were already trying to condition us that he's lost when the game is still on. Um, and I, I would add, though, that th this is not new. I mean, there were local elections in the state legislature, in, in Congress, mayor races, that are often fought down to the last possible vote and could take months. Uh, and I'm not suggesting this happens. I don't know where this is going to go. Uh, but just to say that President Trump should capitulate because one media outlet said uh, oh, they, they won. You know, it's uh, nice to see you. Uh, you're 80 million people that voted for you. Here's your, here's your trophy. It's a little smaller than your one you wanted. Uh, but mm -hmm. thanks for playing. And we'll see you in four years. And just don't forget to give the other guy the keys to the White House. Uh, it's insane just to say that after all has been invested in what's at stake, that you should just, you know, give it up. Especially what you said at the very outset, John. The race isn't even over yet. The, the votes have not even been counted. Right. <laughs> and it's just like the third, at the end of the they're third acting, period of the football game, it says, you know, we're leaving. <laughs> it's, it, they're acting like the fat lady is singing, but the, uh, the orchestra has not even struck up a tune yet. I want to ask you this. Uh, for those of you watching at home, this is a great dynamic duo because I am in life winless in elections. When I ran for office, I lost devastatingly. I came in fourth out of seven people. And Vito is undefeated in, is that right? I mean, did, you never lost, did you? No, He's undefeated no as a public candidate in six consecutive terms in the House, longest standing Republican ever in, in Staten Island. Um, but my experience is weird, and I want uh, it brings me to this. I sat there in a race that, because I got thrown off the ballot, and then I got reinstated by the New York State Supreme Court the night before the election. I had to do the whole thing on paper that year, right? Which was, blew everybody out of the water. And then um, there were all these contested ballots. And all of the candidates got to stand around in the Board of Elections. And um, the judge appointed a referee who was a local Democratic political hack, to be honest with you. I'm not going to say his name. Um, and they would hold up the ballot. And they would hold up, they would pull up on the screen the card 
your election card, and they would hold it next to it, right? And the Democrat would say, good. And the Republican would say, no good. And then they would look at the referee, and he would say, that's good. And they would just put it in that pile. And there would be seven other candidates saying that, saying, how the hell was that good? You know? So, and sometimes they do it right before your eyes. But now Newt Gingrich, uh, I think a pretty darn credible guy, a guy you know well, um, he tweets, it is increasingly clear that Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania are all being stolen by Democrats. And research is almost certainly going to yield far more votes stolen than Biden's current margins. Well, you're a winner in my book, John. Thank especially, you. <laughs> uh, especially as you just explained what happens on a, on a very regular basis when elections are contested. You literally go one by one, ballot by ballot, signature by signature. And what you didn't say is sometimes somebody says, the referee may say, no, I don't, uh, we're not sure. We're going to put this over here. And literally, they create another pile that you go back and revisit. Now, if John is ahead by 300 votes, he's beating Vito by 300 votes, and there's 50 votes in this undecided pile, well, even if every one of those votes was, was real for Vito, John still beats me by 150 votes. So there is that element of, so what, right? Uh, but before you even get to that, you have clear evidence of, as I say, anecdotal evidence of people who went to vote, the votes were manipulated, numbers coming in that are fake. But then there's the legal side, right? So we, go, we sort of alluded to it before. The Supreme Court has already taken a position on it and punted, and that's in Pennsylvania Act 77, where the legislature said, basically, you, have, you need all these ballots in by a certain time. The courts then overruled and say, hey, you know what, uh, take three days, uh, three more days. Uh, you don't need signatures necessarily. The postmarks not be there. So if this goes full, and I don't know where it's going to end up, but if it goes back to the U.S. Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court could then look at that statute and look at what the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania did to determine that, hey, you know, people's votes were being violated. Uh, and, you know, this could, in theory, end up in the U.S. Supreme Court based on what you just said about Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. No doubt about it. All right, do you have to go, or can you hang out for a little while longer? I'll or? stay for a while if you all want. Right. Um, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to uh, say goodbye for today to all our friends listening on Biz Talk Radio. Um, we are going to pop right over to the other side of the hour, kick off hour two of Thursday edition of Liquid Lunch right after this. <laughs> 